This is a public broadcast. All the world is a stage, and all the men and women merely players. Why should a YouTube video be any different? In this video series, at times, you, dear viewer, play the part of a teen full wedding individual. It is just a part. None of my dialogues are demeaning you personally, unless, of course, you truly are one of those teen full wedding individual. Thank you for your understanding. Ring around the rose, we are all stupid. We're all stupid. We're all going to die. Previously, a friend came from out of town. We talked about black seed oil, taking too much vitamin C, and slightly touched on vaccine. Now, let's continue. Do you like horror stories? I have got one for you. Around 400 AD, an Indian medical book recorded a disease marked by pustules and boils, saying the pustules are red, yellow and white, and they are accompanied by burning pain. The skin seemed studded with grains of rice. The Indian epidemic was thought to be punishment from a god, and the survivors created a goddess, Sitala, as the anthropomorphic personification of the disease. Smallpox was thus regarded as positioned by Sitala. In Hinduism, the goddess Sitala both causes and cures high fever, rashes, hot flashes, and pustules. All of these are symptoms of smallpox. The earliest credible evidence of smallpox is found in the Egyptian mummies of people who died some 3000 years ago. Some suggest that it was the major component of the plague of Athens that occurred in 430 BCE. The Japanese smallpox epidemic of 735 to 737 is believed to have killed as much as one third of Japan's population. During the 18th century, the disease killed an estimated 400,000 Europeans each year and was responsible for a third of all blindness. Between 20 and 60 percent of all those infected and over 80 percent of infected children died from the disease. During the 20th century, it is estimated that smallpox was responsible for 300 to 500 million deaths. In the early 1950s, an estimated 50 million cases of smallpox occurred in the world every year. Okay, as I brought you down so much, let me lift your spirit up again. Have you heard of Jonas Salk? Probably not, but if you have, my hat's off to you. So, who was he? Well, he was an American physician who developed one of the first successful polio vaccines. Dr. Jonas Salk discovers a vaccine that promises to wipe out childhood's crippling and killing enemy, polio. Anxious parents are thrilled and grateful, responding to one of the greatest mass inoculations in medical annals. Our vaccines have eliminated polio from most of the world and reduced the number of cases reported each year from an estimated 350,000 in 1988 to only 33 in year 2018. Polio vaccination programs have received resistance from some people in Pakistan, Afghanistan and Nigeria. The three countries as of 27 with remaining polio cases. Some Muslim religious leaders believe that the vaccines are secretly being used for sterilization of Muslims. Now before you laugh at them, are they really any different than you believing vaccine causes autism? Remember earlier I mentioned the guy who asked me if I knew what was in a vaccine. 
Well, we were both drunk, so I didn't go to all the details. And I sure hope he's watching this video. So, by the Middle Ages, the Chinese had developed a technique where they collected scabs from infected people with mild cases of smallpox and in essence smoked that thing. Well, technically they snuffed it. This process is called insufflation. This was the first documented use of inoculation, which is a deliberate infection for the purpose of developing immunity. So yes, using common sense, I can guess what might be in a vaccine. In 18th century, this practice was introduced in Europe and became known as variolation from the scientific name of smallpox, variola. Which reminds me, I completely forgot to tell you the ending of that horror story. Our hero, Dr. Edward Jenner, was born in 17th May, 1749 and he kicked ass. Noting the common observation that milkmaids were generally immune to smallpox, Jenner postulated that the pus in the blister that milkmaids receive from cowpox protected them from smallpox. In 1798, he inoculated a handful of friends and neighbors with cowpox. He then variolates them with smallpox and finds not a single one of them showed any sign of having been exposed to smallpox. He coined the scientific term variola vaccina for the Latin word vacca, that means a cow, and he called his procedure vaccination. See, like every other horror movie trope, this one also have a happy ending. So what are the most common reasons one might have to be an anti-vaxxer? Well, most probably on top of the list would be the misconception that vaccine causes autism. On 28 February 1998, Andrew Wakefield was the lead author of a study of only 12 children with autism that was published in the medical journal Lancet where he suggested a link between autism and the MMR vaccine. After studies on hundreds of thousands of children, no evidence was found for any such link. Further investigation into Wakefield's original paper revealed he distorted the data and acted unethically. Wakefield has lost his medical license. Lancet then made the following retraction. We wish to make it clear that in this paper, no casual link was established between the vaccine and autism, as the data were insufficient. However, the possibility of such a link was raised and consequent events have had major implication for public health. In view of this, we consider now is the appropriate time that we should together formally retract the interpretation placed upon the findings in the paper according to precedent. At times you might see a video of someone who knew someone whose neighbor's cousin's doctor's child had autism after inserting vaccine name here. Well, first of all, post hoc argo propter hoc. That's my smart Latin quote of the day. Well, between us, that's the only Latin quote I know. What does it mean? Uh, how about an example instead? The rooster crows immediately before sunrise. Therefore, the rooster causes the sun to rise. Or correlation implies causation. Obviously, none of these statements are true. In case that story is true, I'm truly sorry for the family and for the baby. But that does not mean it's the vaccine that caused it. There are data from millions of cases saying otherwise. I have added links to a study where Denmark did this test over 10 years for 650,000 children. Please just take off the tin foil and think just for a moment. If these data are true, you see there are no spike. If vaccine 
did cause autism, you would see a sudden spike in every single chart. So finally, can we please let it go with a cherry on top? Some are against deliberately infecting healthy people. Is this really an argument? I mean, I can either prick you with this needle now or come back in a year with a sledgehammer. Your choice. Uh, please, sir, I want some more. Using animal materials, which some consider unclean or inhuman. Well, if I ever had anyone saying that to me, I would just walk away. Do not argue with a fool. He will drag you down to his level and beat you with experience. So, unclean. Well, unclean is what your body does every moment. Inhumane is when you choose a belief that causes other human to suffer. One valid argument is that the procedure may transmit other disease. Absolutely correct. That's why in our current environment, you don't see the doctors prescribing malaria medicine for coronavirus. Our whole process in place is there to ensure that very thing. It's the first step. Then there is personal liberty. This is democracy, right? At this point, I would quote one of my favorite. The democratic man takes great interest in all the things he can buy with his money, is more concerned with his money over how he can help the people. He does whatever he wants, whenever he wants to do it. I understand and agree with personal freedom, but obviously my personal freedom isn't punching you. You might be thinking that choosing not to have your kids vaccinated only affects them, which is horrible anyway, but this is why you're wrong. When a new disease emerges and starts affecting people in population, one of the things we really want to know is whether it's going to continue infecting more and more people or if it's eventually going to die out. The number of cases each infectious person generates is called basic reproduction number or R0 or R0 for short. Vaccine doesn't only protect a person but also ensures that person cannot pass the infection on. Thus, it stops the chain of transmission. Now suppose we have a disease with R0 of 2, which means in a fully susceptible population, each infected person, on average, would give the disease to two other people. If 50% of the population were vaccinated, each infectious person, on average, would only be able to give it to one of these two people. Now, this would make perfect sense to those in multi-level network marketing. This is known as herd immunity, which means as long as a certain proportion of the population is vaccinated, the disease won't be able to transmit in that population. Mathematically, to stop this transmission, we need to vaccinate R0-1 and that number divided by R0 number of population. So, for a super infectious disease such as measles that has a R0 of 18, we need to vaccinate 17 out of every 18 people. There are members of the population that cannot be vaccinated, perhaps because they are too old, too young, or have some sort of immune disorders. If they are surrounded by people who are vaccinated, they can protect them. If the people around them forgo vaccination, then the herd can no longer protect these people. Think of it in a zombie scenario. You're a little girl named Clementine. Now, would you rather want the 10 people around you to have shotguns so they can protect each other? Or would you rather have these people with a big sign saying, please eat me? These idiots would also become zombies. And all of a sudden, you have a lot more zombies to deal with. Finally, religion. Well, I'm not sure if I can get into this without really swearing. And I believe it takes a lot 
to make me swear. Abrahamic God asked a child to be sacrificed. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniac, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully? So you're basing your opinion on what exactly? Thanks to vaccine, here are some names we almost have forgotten. Polio, tetanus, influenza, hepatitis B, hepatitis A, rubella, hib, whooping cough, pneumocal disease, rotavirus, mumps, chickenpox, diphtheria, measles. Actually, scratch the last one. Thanks to the recent flux of anti-vaxxers, measles is back. <laughs> do you honestly need more convincing? Well, if you do, I can wholeheartedly recommend Last Night with John Oliver, where he did an episode on vaccine. Not only it's educational, but also very entertaining. You will find that link in the description below. 16,081 days later, the world has changed. But we still have our sunrise and our sunset. It keeps ticking on. And I'm still alive. Thanks, Mom, and thanks, Dad, to make sure that I was vaccinated. I love you guys.